Hi and welcome to Man Cave Garage Workshop. Today we're going to review and unbox this Ender 3 V2 Neo 3D printer. Uh, this is my first 3D printer. I've never owned one or operated one before. Uh, this is my first time so uh, I'm going to be experiencing this. Uh, please join me as I unbox it and put it together and uh, we'll see how it works. I should mention that I did buy this from Amazon. I'll provide the link in the comments below the video. As you can see, everything's out of the box. You can see all the pieces that it comes with. Um, it's really not that many pieces to put together. Uh, you can see it comes with some extra filament to start your printing. Um, the uh, zip ties to make the cords nice and uh, tight to the uh, to the equipment. Uh, it even has an SD card with your uh, firmware updates, your manuals, and videos. Um, so anyway, let's get started in putting this thing together. After some trial and error, I found that it's easier to just loosen the screws on this and then put it on. It does come with its own Allen wrench, so it's easy to get on. Then attach the ribbon to the back of the controller, like so, and slide it right on. The handle that holds the spool of uh, filament fits on top similar to the control panel. The wires come with these yellow labels that let you know which port to plug them into. Okay, so I had found a spot for it on my desk. It didn't really fit like I thought it was going to. Uh, the, the handle for the filament was a little too high to fit under here, so I put it on the side. That will restrict it from raising up to its full extent, uh, but I don't really plan on building anything that tall, so I really don't see that being an issue. And if it is, I guess I can always take it off. So for now, that's how we'll do it. Um, I did get it all hooked up, so it is uh, plugged in now. So let's see if we can uh, turn it on. It comes with this handy drawer to keep all your tools. Okay, so the first thing it says to do is select control and then reset configuration. Then go back, select prepare, and then auto home. Then we're going to go to move, move Z. and adjust that to zero. Then we'll go back, select Z offset. So now you wanna make sure that the paper can easily move underneath when the nozzle is right at the bottom. Thank you. 
Actually, it says there's got to be some slight friction. Okay, slight friction it is. Then you disable the stepper. That allows it to move. Okay, and then you adjust the knobs so that you get the same friction. Okay, now we select leveling. <clears throat> Once again, we're going to do the Z offset. Same thing, we want to get the paper beneath it with slight friction. And that's it. So now we have to fit, take the filament and feed the tube. So we're gonna stick this in here and you gotta squeeze in the back and turn the knob. Okay. okay, so now we have it all set up. I went ahead and uh, made a model that I want to print, put it on this mini SD card. The SD card goes in the slot on the lower left here. There is a port where you can plug it into the computer, but I don't have a cable that I'll reach. So then we hit print, pick the file. Okay, many hours later, we finally got it going. So I had some issues with tension of the filament. So the way I had it set up, the filament was getting caught and not feeding the extruder. So be sure you have the, uh, the filament such that the uh, wheel could spin. Otherwise, it'll get stuck and it won't print. So right now I'm printing a piece just to test it to see how it does and uh, let's see what happens. Okay, so I finally got to successful printing. So as you can see, the part's doing pretty well. It's almost done. I was waiting till uh, we got some good printing action before I came back and, and showed you how it works. So one of the things I learned was that when you had the spool of the filament sitting on top or on the right, it basically pulls to cause tension in the feeding mechanism. So it wasn't feeding it well, therefore it wasn't printing. So I did move it to the left side uh, and have it come down. So the one thing you'll note, it's on the side here. So instead of having it on top where it doesn't affect the, the Z-axis, it will restrict how far up uh, that can come. So I figured that's a sacrifice that I was willing to make here. Uh, other than that, it seems to work pretty well. I'm pretty happy with it. You can see I did uh, have some, some mess ups so that I had to scrape off the pad. I'll probably have to get a new pad because of that. Uh, but now that I got it working well, it seems uh, to work really well. I'm really happy with it so far. Um, I did download that part, so I didn't create that one. I did create some new parts that I'm going to try to print next, and so we'll see how those come out.
so there are some other things that I want to go over to give you uh, some ideas about how to set it up uh, and so once this is finished I'll walk through that okay so one thing I've learned is that when it's hooked to the computer if anything happens on the computer such as it crashes then the printer is going to stop so it doesn't actually load the print file to the printer it's driving it from the computer so what happened is my computer crashed and you can see it didn't quite finish my part so I had no way to recover it it didn't remember whether it was printing it couldn't tell that it was printing so the printer just stopped and therefore my part is ruined so um, lesson learned I'm not going to be printing from the computer anymore I'm going to print directly from the printer using the SD card Okay, so I've noticed that when I turn it on, the bottom part flashes with question marks. So what I typically do, <clears throat> so what I typically do is go to prepare and then auto home. And you can see now the um, question marks went away. So we finally got the part printed. The uh, problem is I did get errors during the printing. There was a temperature issue. So I think a firmware update will solve that. So that is something that we'll walk through uh, when I do that. So next thing is I want to take the part off the platter. So one thing you'll notice is the line that's on here. Uh, it's hard to see because it's black. Um, but when the printer does start up, it will print a line. I guess it'll print this line to get any excess of the filament out before it starts the actual print. So for this print, this, um, <clears throat> this was a, a design I made. So you can see uh, where it stopped and started. There's, um, a line where the stop happened so one thing with this print it built a support structure so that it can hold it up for the piece that was printed up there <clears throat> so we'll have to take that out the other thing I learned is the infill density is very important I want this this is for a dust collector so I want this to be very sturdy because you're gonna put the um, hose around that cl and clamp it. Um, this is somewhat flexible, so I didn't put enough infill. So we're gonna have to redo this one, but this is my first time, so I thought overall it came out pretty good. Okay, so we learned a few things. Um, one of the things I did is I replaced the metallic mat that came with the, uh, the uh, printer. As you can see, after just a few tries, it got very scratched up. Um, you can tell there's a imprint of a print I stopped because it wasn't adhering. Well, it's really hard to get that off. So I decided I'll try the glass. So I went out and got a, a couple of glass plates. These worked really well. I just finished printing this piece. Um, as you can see, um, it printed out pretty nice. There's a blemish here because the printer actually uh, flagged an error that it was not hot enough. Um, what I had determined that was, it was the nozzle that wasn't um, hitting the right temperature. So I had it set to 200 degrees. It was coming down as it was getting higher. So you can see as it got pretty high on the build, the uh, that's when I got the error. So what I'm learning is the fan speed. I think as you go up, you need to keep that fan speed low so it keeps that nozzle hot. So that's one thing I learned. Uh, again, the build plate, I think uh, getting the glass plate to replace the magnetic uh, uh, flexible plate is probably the way to go. Uh, it did come with some clips that didn't, uh, they were too small. So I ended up using some uh, paper clips here. I do recommend doing some research in how to build a 3D print uh, if you're gonna generate it yourself instead of just uh, downloading uh, things off the internet. This is something I built myself uh, using SketchUp. 
uh, there is nuances to it. You, uh, the good thing is the software, the Creality software, actually tells you if there's going to be a problem before you print. That is something I did like, is that once I downloaded from SketchUp and brought it into the Creality software, it told me that there was going to be a problem here on the bottom. So I went back in, fixed it in SketchUp, re-downloaded it, and it came out really nice. This is my fourth actual print, and it seems to be going pretty well. I've had others that failed early, so lots of early learnings. Here's some things to remember if you get this 3D printer. Build it with the filament spool on the left side of the printer. Replace the stock magnetic bed with a glass one. A link is provided below. The temperature of the print nozzle may decrease as the print gets taller. Be sure to reduce fan speed at higher Z values. Finally, don't connect the computer to the printer. If the printer software crashes, you can't recover it if it's connected. Where, on the other hand, if you lose power or need to shut the printer down, the printer will be able to resume where it left off. As my first try at 3D printing, I'm overall pretty happy with this. It's fascinating to watch it. There's a lot to learn with the printer, the printer software, and of course, if you want to create your own 3D models, the modeling software. Subscribe now and I'll be sure to share more information as I learn the art of 3D printing. Thanks for watching this long video. Check out more videos here on my channel or check us out at mancavegarageworkshop.com. See you next time.